Reactor. Roll off. It's Bryce from Nerd Reactor, and I'm here with Shin and Tyler. And uh, can you guys tell me a little bit about uh, Let It Die? Well, Grasshopper is the first one group to make the team of the team. オンラインに対応したゲームも初めてだと思うんですけどここまでしっかりもうアクションゲームでハルクスラーでもうとにかくいろんな要素が詰まったフリートプレイのゲームチャレンジングなゲームです<笑> So this, this game Let It Die is,、uh, it's the first collaborative effort、uh, after Grasshopper joined the Gung Ho group、uh, So it's a collaborative between Gung Ho and Grasshopper to make、uh, not only an, a first online game for Grasshopper but also an action game With hack and slash elements, Rebel, and a lot of things, really. <laughs> a lot of new challenges and a lot of things that we put into this、uh, free to play game called Let It Die.、Yeah. There are a lot of different elements in the game.、Um, obviously, from what I saw,、uh, it seems to be kind of like a game within a game. まあ、のストーリー的なその謎解きみたいなやつは今はちょっとまだ教えられないんですけど、もう今やってもらった通りで。やっぱゲームの中でゲームをやってるっていうところであれなんでこんな形になってるんだろうっていうちょっと不思議なとこからスタートするゲームですそこの謎もあのプレイしていくうちにだんだん分かってくると思います So、uh, as you saw it's kind of that's part of one of the story elements of the game where it seems like a game in a game and、uh, there are a lot of things that of course we can't tell you because we want you to play and find out for yourself、uh, where a lot of the mysteries you know, start unraveling but that is just definitely one of、uh, the parts of You know, the Let It Die that we want people to enjoy as they play through all the action as well.、Uh, so, one of the key elements of the game is the permadeath.、Uh, basically, when you die, you come back as an enemy within the game. So, this is the Balub and the Naga are just a few things that are going to happen. The Shinda character is going to be a little bit more than a few things that are going to happen. So, the Jibun is a little bit more than a few t h i n を登ってってて死にましたってなってもそのキャラクターファイター自体がまた生き返ってて今度は他の体を使ってそのプレイヤーを倒せばこの体を取り戻すことができるっていうその生き物っていうよりかその体自体が大切でその体をどんどんどんどん乗り換えたり取ったりするっていうところがちょっと。So it's you kind of so it's not exactly permadeath. It's part of the you know it says that when you die you lose、um, you know and they don't come back. But there's a strange force within the Tower of Barb. So when you do die, your body reanimates and becomes you know like it's an enemy. You go for yourself for others. But the one of the biggest parts or elements of the game is you're going to continuously use different bodies, different fighters. You're going to train them. So if you, one of your fighters does die, you can go back up. And fight it. And when you kill that, that reanimated version of yourself with a different body, you can reclaim it. And so the whole part of getting different bodies, strengthening various ones, if they die, reclaim them, or just continuously leveling up and strengthening、uh, these, you know, your various bodies, your fighters, is definitely a very big, important element of the game. Gotcha. 他のプレイヤーが作ったキャラクターも死んだらそこで生き返るんでその自分のゲームの中に他のプレイヤーたちが作ったファイターが生き返ってどんどん出てきたりするっていうところがこのゲームの、あのー、面白いポイントでもあります。Another interesting point that we have with you know, the dying, the death system where you die and reanimate, I'm sure you've probably come across some other interesting characters that are a bit stronger that have names that might scream at you. And that's the whole point is when you do die, or when other players die, their bodies reanimate, and their data as reanimated bodies are sent throughout other players' games. So that's one of the PvP elements、um, asynchronously where your death and other players' you know, death are shared between other players to become、uh, quite difficult enemies、yeah. in each game, other players' games. Awesome. So, I mean, it's、uh, quite an unusual game, but there are a lot of different aspects that feel kind of similar to. Other things.、Uh, where did you guys come up with some of the ideas, or what was your inspiration to let it die? I know, you could, man, to cast all the little thing, you're a tiny, so good, and I said, oh, Kono game, the inspiration, Hokano game, or a tot that to a gentleman, not good there. I know, ma, Suda, that the Morisa, Toka, Tokon, Kikako, do it, do you game, and stick over at the Naka there. Kiko, Oki, also, ah, so, ma, Kiva, the survivor, the one, at the end, Oki, also, so. 日本のテレビ番組の
そのサバイバルをやってるテレビの番組があっていかにその山の中で無人島の中で生き残るかみたいなそういうその生きるか死ぬかみたいなところからインスピレーションを受けてることが多いんで、まあ、他のゲームからなんか影響を受けたとかっていうのはあんまりないですね。So I think we know where you're kind of coming from because it's been said here and there, you know, something soulsy.、Uh, <laughs> but、um, there really wasn't a lot of inspiration that was pulled from any other game. So you know, there were a lot of things that came up.、Uh, the, main, the key word here is survival, and that was、uh, something that was put you know, between, especially with Morisha san of Gung Ho and Suda san of Grasshopper in the creative process. But the biggest、uh, thing that we can probably say that we got a lot of inspiration from was from this one television show. I guess more of a reality TV show in Japan, not really like Survivor, but it's where one person is placed in an extreme situation, like in a, on a mountain or a deserted island, and they have to survive. And in this situation, it's like, well, if you were left alone to survive, how would you survive? What would you do to stay alive? Like, what extremes would you go through? And just that excitement of what players would do and put in a, I guess, somewhat similar situation, what would you do to survive was kind of. The biggest point we took that really started driving the survival aspects of this game. I mean, think if you played,、um, did you eat any frogs? We ate a few. We stomped on a few. Well, Kaido も食べたんですよね。それでまあ survival の要素。そうですね。That's definitely one of the elements of survival, right? We're like, you, you gotta eat a frog or a rat or something, just as it.、Yeah. <laughs> so it came more from that versus、um, you know pulling from other games, I guess you could say. Mark Hamill、uh, narrates the、um, introduction, I believe. And I was wondering whose idea was to pull Mark Hamill into this project. That's what happened. So, <laughs> in, regards, in regards to Mark, I'm on other、um, names that you can see、uh, on what we just pushed out、uh, last week. Just, we have a little peek on what names are in the game as、uh, voice actors. But it kind of started off with you know, at Grasshopper, we have Akira Yamaoka, the sound director. And so when he talked to、uh, Kazuki Morishita, the CEO of you know,、uh, Gung Ho, and of course Suda51 at Grasshopper, and they thought, you know, we want to see what kind of big names you can pull in, and kind of thought, you know, What names do we like? What names do we know that are notable? And kind of started from there, and then from talking with the sound recording studio, and it just kind of went from there. So, there a lot of ideas, and some went through, some did, but of course, now we, we did get him in there. <laughs> so, yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Uncle Dad, he's right here, is、uh, always on his skateboard. So, I didn't know if you were a big fan of skateboarding or. Who was a big fan of skateboarding? I like to be a skateboard. I don't think it's my influence. I 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 think it's my influence. So, of course,、um, Shin he does like to skateboard, but、uh, <laughs> he can't take credit for、really? you know, putting the skateboarding、uh, Grim Reaper idea in. It was part of c 51 and the creative team for making the world setting. And of course, at first, it started off with being you know, really heavy. It's like death, dying, living or dying. Survival and you know, gore and whatnot. But inside of that, they added things like you know, a skateboard, and then that came up with the you know, death on a skateboard. And so it was really a collaborative effort on the creative team and you know, try to balance with you know, the dark, you know, gritty, gory, gory setting with some pop and pulpy elements as well. So, is there anything else that、uh, you'd like to say to any you know, viewers or anyone that is planning on trying the game out? I know. E3 とかバックスでもそうなんですけどこのゲームフリートゥープレイなんですよでフリートゥープレイっていうとちょっとネガティブな印象を持たれることが多いんですけどもう本当にもうパッケージゲームに負けないぐらいの気持ちであのいろんなアセットを突っ込んでゲームシステムも緻密に練られてますし普通に7000円8000円で売っても全然大丈夫なぐらいのアクションゲームシステムが出来上がってますんでそれを。フリートゥープレイでダウンロードすれば誰でもできてしまうんで
もうぜひ一度プレイしてほしいなと思います。The biggest thing is, Let It Die is a free to play game. And with free to play comes, usually very, when people hear it, they start thinking, oh, free to play, and there's kind of this negative image or stigma that comes with it. But we at Grasshopper here, as we're saying, is that they worked really hard with Gung Up to make a game that has quality. That, you know, that people think that free to play doesn't have a lot of you know, high quality, it's cheap, but you know, the, the, they focused on making a quality game, something that you would spend 70, 80 bucks for. You know, that was. What they wanted to do while making the game and not really cut any corners of, you know, oh, we want to make sure we cut these off or put paywalls in. You know, it's something that, it's a, it's a game with so, we put so much into it. All these, you know, different things, but the assets and systems and whatnot, and something that would definitely you would compare to a regular package game. So the, the biggest thing is, if you have any doubts, it is free to play. So definitely try it out, see it, and hopefully you enjoy it as we hope you do because we've put so much into it to really, you know, Break free from that negative free to put image.